Before I start, I would like to recommend this page to you. This site was designed for my paid course, however, the owner has decided to make it public. Here is a summary of the basic course. It is not as complete as the video course, but it is enough to learn many things. From now on I will make several videos of advanced manam techniques, which are neither in the basic nor advanced courses. I will assume that you have already seen and studied the page I just showed you and that you have seen the basic manam videos on my channel. We will start by studying techniques for creating custom animations. It will take two or three videos to see all the techniques. The code for this video is here. The first thing to understand is the concept of sub-M objects. Basically, the sub-M objects are created when we use the add method of the M objects. To access these objects, we can do it as with the V groups, but we can also use the sub M objects attribute. Once this is explained, we can continue with the animations. In this markdown, you can see a summary of the most important methods of the animation class. This will be our guide to understand the theory. Read it, and if you can't understand it, no problem, we will see several examples of how to use them. In the first example, we are going to move an object and change its color simultaneously. The first thing to understand is the use of the init method. The class animation receives as first argument the object that we are going to animate, in addition to the typical parameters of the animations. The init method creates these attributes so that they can be used in the rest of the methods. If we need it, we can create more attributes before calling the super function. For our animation, we need the final position, the initial color, and the final color. As you can see, in the super function we are only passing the arguments that the animation class receives. Now, there are three ways to specify the process of the animation. Specify the interpolation of the whole object. Specify the interpolation of each sub-M object. Specify both the interpolation of the whole object and the interpolation of each sub-M object. In this first video, we will only see the first case. To specify the process of the whole object, we can override the method interpolate or interpolate M object. Either of them works, but traditionally we use interpolate M object. In these two methods, the alpha value indicates the percentage of the duration, that is, the percentage of the run time. This alpha value always starts from zero and begins at one, always. To obtain the real alpha, the rate function must be applied. This real alpha is the one used in the updater functions of alpha type. If you don't know what this is, you can watch this video, where I explain what are the alpha updaters. A very common technique in the alpha updaters is to use the restore method, this is also explained in this video. In the case of the class animations, the attribute starting M object is used. This object is created in the begin method, and basically it is a copy of the M object attribute before starting the animation. This works as a reset of the object. Once the object has been reset, the methods are applied to it using the real alpha. I left here the same example, but using an alpha updater, I think it will be easier for you to understand. However, it is necessary to distinguish that the alpha here is the real alpha, not the other one. Sometimes it is useful to use the class animations outside the play method. In order to apply the interpolate method of an animation correctly, we must always execute the begin method. 
If we don't do it, we can generate errors, or simply, the interpolation will be ignored. Knowing this, the most natural thing would be to think if it is possible to merge the animations, surely we would do something like this. However, we see that it does not work, but we can notice that the order in which we execute the interpolations matters. The reason for this is because, when the begin method is executed, the object starting M object is created at that moment, Almost all animations execute this line when the interpolation occurs, similar to what we did in the first example. We can solve it in many ways, the simplest would be this way. The problem with this is that the animation takes longer to render, since several attributes have to be redefined, so I don't recommend you to abuse this technique. Some animations redefine the use of begin, as is the case of apply method, so keep that in mind, check the source code of the animation you want to merge to see that you are using it correctly. Let's now look at the techniques for adding or removing objects during the animation. There are two ways to do this, either add the new objects to the main object or add them directly in the scene. Let's look at the first option. In this example, we are going to draw and disappear a rectangle to highlight an object on the screen. To indicate the configuration of the rectangle, we can use this technique. The kwargs starting with this string will be added to a new configuration dictionary. And also, if we need, we can define some default values using the merge dix recursively function for that purpose. In the begin method, we will add the new objects, after calling the super function to avoid some problems. Now, when the animation finishes it is necessary to remove the object, we do this in the clean up from scene method. The only thing left is the interpolation. We can use the method get subcurve to obtain only a portion of the rectangle. Everything works correctly, even the default values work. If we don't add the object, then the animation will not run. Now let's move on to the solution with setup scene. The only difference is that here we are adding the new objects in the scene directly, not in the animation object. Let's move on to the final example. In this animation, we are replacing one object with another in a scene using the fade effect. The first thing we have to do is to add the target object to the scene, we do this inside setup scene. At the end of the animation we have to remove the base object. And in the interpolation we have to recreate the fade in and fade out effect. If we print the objects in the scene we will see that indeed the base object has been replaced. And that's all for this video. It's a good idea to review the source code of other animations yourself, so you can learn more. I remind you that you can buy my libraries for ManMCE to make more complex animations in an easier way. For now, I have a promotion of all my animations and libraries for only $250, soon I will raise the price to $350 as I will add more libraries that I'm working on so it's a good time to take advantage of it.
In the next video, we will learn how to manipulate each sub-M object. See you in the next line of code, goodbye.